Hello Info person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to discuss some of the more fascinating discoveries in the realms of physics, and specifically focusing on something referred to as the time crystal. A concept that might sound like something out of science fiction, but that's actually real. And a concept that in just the last few years has seen a lot of major breakthroughs, even though it was more or less hypothetical for many many years. And so in this video we're going to discuss exactly what these time crystals are, we're going to talk about some of these new discoveries, discuss why this might be important in the future, but most importantly talk about one time crystal that we can now technically see with our own eyes. Which is sort of a big deal. But in order for this to make sense, let's start with some definitions, and I guess with crystals that you might already know, and that most of us have seen in real life. Let's talk about regular crystals. And so here we're talking about things like salt, sugar, diamonds, and even water ice. And the question is, what exactly makes them crystals? Well, if you look really closely, you'll see that at the atomic level, these crystals essentially have a very specific structure. A structure that repeats itself in space. So it's sort of like a checkerboard pattern. Here you can take any square and find an identical square at regular intervals. And it's this repeating pattern in space that defines a crystal. But now imagine something maybe a little bit more unusual. Imagine you take a bunch of these balls, or I guess a bunch of marbles, and toss them in the water. And they'll eventually settle down on the bottom of the water, coming to a complete stop. This is what physicists define as the resting state. In this case, this would be their lowest energy state. Here they have the least amount of energy. But then in order for us to make them move again, we have to give them some extra energy. For example, we can maybe shake the ball, or push one of the balls and make it bump with other balls. But what if even at their lowest possible energy state, those marbles or those balls still kept moving? And in this case, not just randomly moving, but actually moving with predictable repeating patterns without the need for any extra energy. So for example here they could all be moving in a circle and following an exact pattern even though there is no extra energy provided. And that's the core idea behind a time crystal. The idea that was originally proposed back in 2012, so actually only 13 years ago from when I'm making this video, by the brilliant physicist Frank Wilczek. The physicist known for a lot of other concepts, including concepts like inflation, and who also won the Nobel Prize. And so he theorized that such a thing could physically exist, and instead of having a pattern just in space, this crystal would also have a pattern in time. Thus, time crystal. And so if you were to take a snapshot of this crystal, you will actually discover that it seems to have the exactly same arrangement in time again and again after regular predictable amounts of time. Although here let's clarify something first. This is not the idea of some kind of free energy, or some kind of a perpetual motion machine, because here time crystals do not create energy, and they don't break any laws of physics, because here these crystals are technically still in the lowest possible energy state, so you cannot extract any extra energy from their motion. As a matter of fact here their motion doesn't represent any kinetic motion, and so they're not going to be able to power your house or your smartphone. But despite of this, since 2012, time crystals essentially became a new theoretical curiosity. And it was only in 2016 that researchers were finally able to create first prototype, or first experimental version, that was achieved by the team from University of Maryland, using lasers to cause a reaction inside entangled ions, causing them to spin back and forth in a repeating motion. In essence, this was the first demonstration that time crystals seemed to be possible. But these time crystals involved extremely complex quantum systems, either involving super cold ions or diamond crystals doped with impurities. And more importantly, they were all microscopic, very difficult to observe, and also required a kind of a constant kick of energy, like for example a laser pulse, in order to produce them. For example, one of the experiments in 2021 was able to create a time crystal by using what's known as magnons, tiny collective vibrations inside a magnetic material, which physically doesn't really exist inside a solid object, but is still a real phenomenon that can be observed by using scientific instruments. And this was filmed using an incredibly advanced and very fast X-ray camera that was able to take pictures billions of frames per second. And so in some sense you can basically think of this as a kind of a hypothetical, theoretical phenomenon, not necessarily something that's physical yet. But in some of the recent studies, especially the one from February 2024, a team at Dormant University was able to create a time crystal, in this case using iridium gallium arsenide, 
that surprisingly was able to last for a record-breaking 40 minutes. With these crystals requiring no external stimulations for at least 40 minutes, and even allowing researchers to create beautiful patterns through minute manipulations. And so this was approximately 10 million times longer in terms of length compared to some of the previous experiments. And so in just 8 years, we went from the first time crystal to something that was already pretty impressive. But this is where things get super exciting, because now, in September of 2025, physicists at University of Colorado Boulder made another groundbreaking discovery. They created the first ever time crystal that humans can actually observe directly under certain conditions. And you can even see it with your bare eyes. And though this is still something that requires a microscope, it's nevertheless visible to our own eyes, and as you can see from this video, even in real time. And so how exactly was this achieved, and what are we looking at? Well, in this case, they used liquid crystals. Basically the same material you find inside your phone display. And so for their study, they designed special glass cells filled with these rod-shaped liquid crystal molecules coated with photoresponsive dyes. And then by shining a constant normal light on these cells, here we're talking about just regular light, nothing fancy, not lasers, they observe the reaction from the dye molecules, with the liquid crystals inside beginning to swirl and move. And surprisingly, under a microscope, these patterns started to form these unusual psychedelic tiger stripes. That's essentially what you're observing here. But the important part from this experiment is that they actually kept moving endlessly for hours. And more importantly, all of this was happening at room temperature, and of course observable with a microscope. And unlike a lot of previous quantum experiments or experiments involving very complex setups, all of this was achieved with something you can actually find inside your smartphone, and by just using a regular optical microscope. But even when the temperature was changed a little bit, these stripes still continued without being disrupted. And so now this is technically referred to as a continuous space-time crystal. That means it breaks symmetry not just in time, but also in space, and does so spontaneously, without needing a periodically pulsing external force to drive its motion. Which by itself is a little bit unexpected, but also quite groundbreaking and super exciting. So for example here, by using this phenomenon, it might become possible to create extremely efficient lasers, lasers that basically self-amplify, or even sensors, or maybe communication devices, that use this with barely any energy. And along with several other experiments in the last two years, collectively all of this is moving this field of time crystals from something that started as a proposition and a theoretical curiosity into experimentally accessible systems, and that will eventually very likely become practical and extremely useful. But I guess one question here is, okay, so how useful, and what can we actually do with this in the future? Well, right now we have certain propositions, nothing concrete yet, but let's just discuss some of the potentially useful cases for these time crystals that are currently explored by various teams. For one, they could create super accurate clocks because of their very precise and stable oscillations. As you probably know, today our world runs on extreme precision, and especially precision when it comes to clocks. You might want to check out some of the previous videos on the GPS system to understand how this is basically everything for us. And so here time crystals could potentially lead to very efficient, extremely accurate clocks, revolutionizing how we measure time. Likewise, scientists have proposed using these for quantum computing. Because time crystals can also technically create stable memory and actually become a kind of a quantum analog for RAM inside quantum computers. And that's mostly because of their predictable repeating patterns which is essential for building powerful quantum computers. Likewise, these optical time crystals have been actually proposed for a potential use in counterfeiting. So, for example, imagine banknotes with some kind of a time watermark, where by shining a light on them, a dynamic pattern will appear, making them incredibly difficult to fake. Alternatively, they can also be used in some kind of an advanced data storage. By stacking multiple time crystals and combining the patterns, it might become possible to create complex time barcodes allowing us to store a vast amount of digital data in a new, incredibly efficient way. And they could also be used for optical communication. For example, using optical devices like lenses or greetings that would change over time, encoding and transmitting information for faster telecommunication. And so, in essence, what we're witnessing here is a completely new field of science and technology. Something that started as a kind of a wild theoretical idea, the idea for creation of this new phase of matter, and something that's now becoming physically possible and has now been demonstrated by a lot of different experiments. And while we're still in extremely early stages for all of this, 
Because these advances have been achieved in just the last 8 years, we can only imagine what's going to happen in the next decade. And this also reminds us that the universe has quite a lot of things in store for us, pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. But because this is just a start for this particular field, we'll definitely discuss this more in some of the future videos once there are some additional discoveries or additional updates. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more secret videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.